what you're supposed to be doing are the things that you like the most. God will put in your heart uh, a desire for some things on this earth. Um, and it's the things you like the most that are your ministry. Here with us today is LaDonna. She is an amazing musician um, and actually is a very uh, special musician because she actually does healings through music. And this is, this is one of the things that uh, is so beautiful to see. It's so beautiful to witness, um, gotten to see her myself. And uh, we, we're really uh, blessed and, and amazed to, to have her here uh, today with us. Very honored. How, how did you realize that God was calling you to, to enter into this ministry of healing through music? I was born to a Pentecostal church. Pentecostal church, as well as Catholic church, uh, we believe in miracles. So it's not unusual at all for people to be healed at church. My grandmother was the pianist at the church. Uh, when the piano came into our home, I was about three or four years old. I loved that piano. I mean, three or four years old, I'd crawl up there, I'd figure a way to push a chair up to it and get there and couldn't keep my hands off of it. So my parents got me piano lessons. By the time I was in junior high school, was extremely advanced on the piano. And when I saw the violins, I fell in love. I was 12 years old. I brought a violin home. I asked the teacher, could I borrow one of those spare violins in the closet? And I brought a violin home. And uh, my parents were not in favor of this. The violin was squeaky and my piano was not. Time came that I took the violin to church. There was an old man that played the violin at church. The very first time they would take an offering at church, they let me play with them. And a lady came up to me afterwards and she said, while you were playing the violin, I was healed. She said, I had a headache. And I know that the notes that you played brought the presence of God and I was healed. Well, um, wasn't that unusual? Uh, for something like that to happen at church. So I, I remembered it. I kind of remembered it, but um, I wasn't like, oh, you know what happened when I, you know, it wasn't like that. It was just something I kind of remembered. And, but every time I played and every time I had an opportunity um, to play my violin, people would get healed. And, and so I, I started noticing that. Uh, if you don't mind sharing, would, would you, Share with us maybe a story of healing that, that happened. I remember one of the last ladies that was standing in line, uh, I just felt to put my violin down and put my arms around her. And she told that when I put my arms around her and started praying for her, that her back started popping and crackling down every vertebrae. And this is what she told me afterwards. She said she had 21 diseases in her body. She was approximately 40 years old. She had never slept a full night in her life. She had constant pain for the 40 years that she was on this earth. And she said as her back, there was a hole in every vertebrae of her back. And she says her back popped and crackled as Jesus healed her. And as the pain left her body for the first time ever since she had been born, I'm standing there with my mouth hanging open as she's telling about this healing, just uh, amazed at what the Lord was doing. And even as she was telling that more people, started getting healed. Now, um, I've learned in these 20 something years of ministry that as people tell about their healing, that the presence of God comes also. And uh, so as, as she was telling about her healing, then what you would call in, um, in church or Christian language would be the testimony. Uh, there, there's always the skeptics, right? The skeptics who, who are out there and like, ah, oh, is this really true? Like, you know, can, can healing really happen? There is something that I can tell them. It's too late. You got to me too late. I've been, uh, even, uh, uh, I, I had a very minor surgery about, um, 10 years ago and the doc, that doctor almost killed me by making a mistake. Uh, and, uh, the devil who is the biggest skeptic of all, told me as I laid in the hospital bed, almost dead, 
Well, all those things you told those people are not true. Look at you. You're going to die and you're going to die sick. I just didn't believe it. I said it over and over again, by the wounds of Jesus, I'm healed. Well, um, the devil didn't succeed. And I'm just telling you, if you, uh, if you were right here looking at me saying, well, Jesus doesn't heal, that's already passed. I mean, I don't know where you get that from. Uh, it's certainly not the Bible, because the Bible says, by his wounds, you are healed. In the New Testament, it says, by his wounds, you were healed. I've watched totally blind eyes open. I've seen ears. With, as, as I play the violin, I've watched people with ears that don't even have eardrums hear. I, I actually, um, every week I see someone healed uh, or more than one, multiple people healed because I'm constantly playing my violin to groups. I'm constantly just, I, I don't even need to play my violin. Jesus is a healer. He doesn't need me playing the violin for people to be healed. There is just a gift there. You know, a lot of it reminds me, and me and Jose talked about this, it reminds me of a new field of science called epigenetics. And it's actually this idea of how powerful the brain is and affecting you know all of our dna um, because everything is connected in our whole body and and so if the god if god works through our our body and works through our mind and the mind could be thought of as the holy spirit in some way you know because the bible talks about how god works through the holy spirit and the holy spirit works through us and then if you take that to epigenetics then it's like kind of seeing a very similar thing and me and jose like to find where science and the Bible connect. And we're always so amazed at like, man, you know, Jesus was saying these things in the Bible centuries ago or, or thousands of years ago. And we find that these things are still true and that the newest research and science is starting to support some of these things. And it's quite amazing. And you hear it all the time with doctors and, and miracles happening and the doctors can't explain it. And that's amazing too. But with epigenetics, it's like the idea that the mind these beliefs that we have, if we're strong enough in those beliefs and the faith and, and believing our that we feel, then they can happen. And that's what epigenetics is kind of exploring, the idea between the mind controlling every molecule and, and cell of the body. And so it makes me wonder if that, you know, if that's God working through our mind, or you could say our Holy Spirit, and it works with our faith and our beliefs and all that works together. And we need a strong foundation of the word of God when we look at these things and we need to be extremely careful to keep the source. Uh, yes, the Lord works through things. Obviously we know that, uh, but we need to be very careful to know the source of the healing, you know, because sometimes, and of course um, men, especially men that don't know God and want to prove that they're right about something, uh, will want to give more power to and make more of a foundation of just your mind alone. But when you would connect the mind, and, and I really believe that, um, yes, now the word of God does talk to us about your mind being renewed, okay? And through the renewing of your mind, now how do you renew your mind? With the word of God, okay? So that strengthens your faith. So yes, uh, when you feed on the word of God that, and you realize that he truly did carry your sicknesses and sorrows to the cross, then that strengthens you on the inside. And because we have a mind and we also have a spirit, a soul. And the, so the word of God does strengthen our soul, but it does come through the mind. So I'm a big proponent of saying, don't forget the source. 